Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull uh, from 2008. This film is rated PG-13 with a runtime of 2 hours and 2 minutes. As of the recording of this video, it has a Rotten Tomato score of 77% for the critics uh, and also a 58% for the audience. Here's a quick synopsis. It is the height of the Cold War and famous archaeologist Indiana Jones returning from his latest adventure finds out that his job as at Marshall College is in jeopardy. He meets Mutt, a young man who wants to help Indy find the legendary crystal skull of Akator, and the pair set out for Peru. However, deadly agent Irina Spalko is searching for the powerful artifact as well because the Soviets believe it can help them conquer the world. This film was directed by Steven Spielberg, written by David Cope, George Lucas, and Jeff Nathanson, and it stars Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, Kate Blanchett as Irina Spelko, Ken Allen as Marion Ravenwood, Shia LaBeouf as Mutt Williams, Ray Winstone as Mac Michelli, uh, and John Hurt as Professor Oxley. Um, so as I did my rewatch of all the Indiana Jones films, I feel like this one gets a bad rap for sure. Maybe even an unfairly bad rap. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, I think this movie, while it certainly has its flaws, it manages to deliver some fun and exciting action sequences overall. Uh, the film's action sequences are really one of the highlights of this film. You know, uh, whether it's the case, uh, the chase through the warehouse, uh, all the way leading up to that giant explosion, or the breathtaking motorcycle chase through the jungle, uh, the boats, the waterfalls, there's no shortage of pulse-pounding moments that capture... The spirit of Indiana Jones, I think Spielberg knows what people want to see in these type of sequences. Uh, and this is all really has this trademark style. Now, I think although there is a, a mixture here of practical effects and camera work and just some of that stuff, um, it definitely feels a little bit different than everything else just because this was so far removed from the original installments. Um, I will say the story uh, very convoluted, very clunky. Uh, the plot just takes Indiana Jones in a quest to really follow somebody else following the clues. This one, unlike some of the other films, it doesn't allow Indy to really be the, like, shine and solve all the, all the, um, all the clues to, to where they're going, uh, because they're trying to also introduce, introduce, uh, Mutt, you know, Indy's not always the one that's coming up with a plan. Uh, and it just kind of resolves in getting into more trouble that then Indy has to get him out of. So, yeah, it's a little it's a little convoluted, a little clunky. Um, you know, I think some of the sequences just they overstay their welcome and therefore kind of throw the pace off in a very weird direction as well. Uh, I'll say it as well. The performances are a mixed bag, you know. I think Harrison Ford is is great when he's doing great stuff, but I also feel like sometimes you know you could tell here uh, maybe he wasn't fully involved in the character. Uh, also, it was a little bit distracting when you could noticeably see, you see the use of a body double in a lot of scenes, because obviously Harrison Ford at this age would not be doing all those stunts, uh, which is a very very big difference from you know, the way he, he moves and all that stuff. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, over-reliance in CGI some places. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, so yeah, just all that kind of stuff, all that blend, it doesn't, it feels like they added a layer on top of all the stuff that was already pretty good about Indiana Jones franchise. Uh, and it's just not meshing well. Uh, the supporting cast, I think it's Overall, fine. Uh, you know, Shia LaBeouf, I think, has some great moments and then has some clunky ones as well. Uh, Kate Blanchett, I think, she really sells a big, cheesy villain. So if you're in for that, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, but I can see how that's also something that maybe you would not like to see. Uh, it's great to see, you know, Karen Allen as Marion. I think that just brings a, a nostalgic touch uh, to the film. And, you know, her chemistry with, with uh, Harrison Ford is definitely uh, undeniable. Uh, one of the aspects that is also kind of a drawback is really the over-reliance on heavy CGI. 
in a lot of the climactic scenes, I feel like because the technology was, it wasn't really new, but it wasn't as, as advanced as some places. Uh, the film just really started to use it, whereas one of the strengths of the original trilogy was, you know, done in practical effects. And when they did use CGI, it looked bad, it looked cheesy, but that also gave it a little bit of a charm. Uh, whereas here, everything kind of devolves eventually into like this big giant CGI mess, which is a big problem with a lot of films of this time and even, you know, in the future from there. Uh, so that part was a little distracting, but I think overall, like even with all its flaws, this is still a pretty fun movie. I had a really good time rewatching it. I think also it helped that knowing all the twists already. Uh, so on the rewatch, because you're not, because you're not also discovering everything along with the characters, and because you already know what's happening, uh, the impact, and also I guess because your expectations may be lower on the rewatch, just if you maybe didn't enjoy it. So I don't know. I had a good time with this film. I had a good time watching all the films, really. Uh, and I'm very excited for Dial of Destiny later this week. Uh, but, you know, I think it was a fun one to revisit. Uh, at this point, once I watch Dial of Destiny, I will for sure uh, have watched all the Indiana Jones films. Uh, it will be documented on the Internet via the reviews. Uh, if you haven't seen the reviews for the first three films, make sure to go check those out in the channel. Uh, and yes, yeah, stay tuned because we'll definitely have a review for Dial of Destiny. Uh, James Mangold, one of my favorite directors. So very excited for that. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone.